Fitz kicking off to Davy Fitz uh, being the big one I think that most people will be talking about this morning yeah so it looks like Davy Fitz might be a done deal or close enough as well, close to done deals as you can get before there is an unveiling and somebody with a yeah, jersey I suppose it, or a scarf it started yesterday with the um, with the, uh, the the announcement from uh, one of the uh, betting companies that he was that they had closed the market yeah but in itself, that wouldn't really be... No, because a small amount of money closes the market and that, and it's great publicity. And it's a nice, handy publicity. But the thing about it was that uh, while Davy had the, the gambling, the betting on Davy, the, the market had closed, the other, two of the other main contenders, their price had cut as well. Hmm. So I think uh, they'd gone in by from 20s to 16s, whoever was second in the betting, and, yeah. and, and somebody else. So um, it, that in itself wasn't. But uh, all the noises since that is, is, is that, it, uh, that a deal is pretty close. It's on the back of most of the, or a lot of the papers today that... That it's expected in the next 24 or 48 hours, so I think that's. Uh, this will be devastating for Wexford. It will be. Hu it's huge for Wexford. Yeah. Now the, the thing is, I would imagine, like if you go back to roughly this time last year, you know the players went down to Davy to visit him to try and get, try and convince him to do one more year. So they are probably not that surprised. I would say that that he's that he's not coming back to them. It might be a surprise that he's going to Galway, but e even the the travelling involved will be cut dramatically in that case if they if he does go to Galway. Yeah, you were saying it's about an hour. Yeah, I just took it into Google Maps last night and it was to Galway City just for point of reference from Six Mile Bridge where I think Davy is based. That's just over an hour. Um, so, you know, that's a lot more manageable than cross country from Clare to uh, to Wexford to where the Centre of Excellence is in fairness. So, um, it, it was, Davy has referenced it a few times. It's, it's a fair slog going over and back now but where Wexford go from here now, assuming the thing is confirmed, is, is it's, it's a big question. For yeah, him. what would you do? It's very hard to know because those boys, like Davy, he, he gets very close to his players, you know what I mean? And he gives them absolutely everything and in turn he gets everything back. So what sort of character do you come in and, and replace that with? It's a, it's a very hard question. and It needs know. to be somebody who's going to maintain the style of play that they've evolved from being beaten out the gate at their old style of play to now being Leinster champions. Yeah, well, you could make the evolution that, that now that they have built, or make the, the, the argument now that they have built that confidence in themselves, that they can go and play and compete at the level, can they go and be a bit more expansive now? Would it suit them a little bit better to to play a slightly different style of game? Because there was opposition in the county, as we know, to, to know, that sort I, of... I think they went away from it in the last 15 minutes against Tip, and when they stopped being... The, the counter argument that I that style of play is very high octane, high energy stuff that and coming so they down. Maintain it. Well, Davy said himself after that game that you know maybe they they just saw the finish line and just didn't know how to get over the line that you know they, they sort of maybe froze. I don't think he used the word froze, but he just said that when it came to it, we just didn't know how to finish them off. Yeah. Um, but in fairness, to come back like Tipperary were absolutely awesome. This is as big. A, I think Nicky English described that last week as as good a win as Tipperary have had that he's seen them. Right. So you know what you have He'd to know. give them. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he would. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, so I think Darren McGrath is the perfect candidate. Like I realise he's got a lot of other stuff. Yeah, and he's a, a similar style. And but this is this is the gig now. Like this is this. If, if I, he's never going to get the Kilkenny gig. Mm. He's definitely going to go back and take Waterford at some point in his life. But like. This Wexford team right now in need of somebody to step in. You know, he knows what it's like to step in after Davy. And he t he takes it off. He takes it. It takes him out of Munster as well, which probably yeah. you know avoids the initial. And it's not very far to travel. Not very far to travel. Yeah, he'd be a good shout. Now he has uh, he has commitments in Leash. He does. Uh, so he does. He's coaching in Leash. Coaching in Leash. So what, whether he could work that or not, would be it'd certainly be very interesting. Certainly yeah. very interesting it, it, because it just strike me as sort of similar characters in terms of like very very close to their players and they do they. Their idea is that they facilitate and get the best of everything to, for them to get the best of everything back, and uh, yeah, yeah. He, he would be an interesting show. Because that, uh, I, I mean, that Wexford team um, are very close to being a, a team that has a bunch of self-disciplining, self-actualized leaders who are, you know, like smart, very smart guys in day-to-day uh, -day life. Their their day jobs are big jobs. They kind of. Uh, they know exactly what they're about. They're they're not a team of kids anymore, you know. So they no, and they've been around and they've won they've won things now. They won the one in Leinster last year. They've sort of turned the the great traditional rivalry with Kilkenny. They've sort of brought a little bit of parity to that. Um, so and they are they could go into any of the, the the Leinster teams now next summer and they will give themselves a chance. So yeah, it'll be a, it'll be a very enticing job for for somebody. One eye on the exit. It's Rachel Pochettino. And he's rubbing his eye, and you can only see one eye. And 
I'm wondering uh, how this works. Pressure piles on Poch as Spurs crash out. This is Matt Barlow's story. Spurs miserable start of the season continued last night when they were hustled out of the Carabao Cup by League Two side Colchester. Um, they're saying the pressure is on Pochettino and he's got one eye on the exit. I mean, surely, is, is it he resigning? Because Spurs aren't going to sack Richard Pochettino. No, that, 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 that's final. the first thing that came into my mind when you, when you said that. Just like mm-hmm. He's got to a Champions League final and has got almost no backing yeah. uh, over the last couple of years. So, um, yeah, I, t- I think, if anything, maybe there are opportunities that will knock for him, especially if you look at how bad Real Madrid are going at the minute. Yeah. So that's an, an obvious one for him that he's linked with before. So, um, I think that he's done almost as much as he can unless he gets some, some proper backing in the next next window or next two windows at, it, the, at the very most. I'm kind of surprised he stayed in, in retrospect. Well, where could he have gone? Well, he could have just been, he could have been Minister Without Portfolio, which brings extra pressure at all of the big clubs. Mm. Suddenly Solskjaer is going, yeah, it's okay. That, that <laughs> vote of confidence you gave me yesterday, it's like, well, Pochettino's available and, and like technically available for nothing. I don't know if he would be if he was. If he I was suppose he's, a, he's, a, he's a large element of control there at the minute in sports. I'd imagine, like he's 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 outside of the spending, obviously, yeah. but he, he is and everything else. Yeah, he's sort of he's the man and he's on question there, and he's yeah. an awful lot of uh, very good players. So he'd have to go a long way to get a better group of players than he has, you know. So and it's certainly not Man United at the minute. No, it isn't. But um, you might get paid more money. You might have more opportunity. And then there's the headline. Um, and there will be coverage from Rory Keane in Hamamatsu. Sex and injury means Carberry in line to start. So um, the one in the uh, UK is Jones defends call to start Billy. So Billy Vinopola is going to start against the USA. And uh, you know, obviously England are nothing without Billy Vinopola at the minute. Uh, if they're, they're a completely different team, if he's not playing number eight. So the English rugby media think they know more than Eddie Jones. They're saying, don't pick him. Yep. Rest him. It, somebody's going to get one of those calls spectacularly wrong over the course of the World Cup and like, yeah. hopefully it's not the Ireland team but if any believe in the poll or something happens to them like you know there's going to be a mini riot in the English media because they'll, they'll, as you said they flagged this yeah know. and like he doesn't need to play that game there's a couple of games in that group that he does need to play and that against the USA is not one of them no no absolutely not that's, that's one for um, what is it they call the, the Lions team the midweek Lions team the dirt trackers and that what they call them I yeah. think that's one for them what have you got for us um, just starting with the back of the Herald we've uh, uh, Davy set to take over in Galway which we spoke a little bit about a little bit earlier on uh, Michael Verney uh, with that that uh, the bookmaker suspending the, the betting on Davy to take over uh, and the main story is the, the is talking about Troy Parrott making his uh, first start for Spurs in what turned out to be a reasonable night for him by all accounts uh, missed uh, one uh, decent chance for a goal um, I know Dan McDonnell was, was there um, uh, but uh, t- Spurs crashed out, which is, which was a, a blow to their plans, I'm sure. Right. Uh, so I don't normally read from the front of the star, but it's uh, Maura, I'll be ice queen. And uh, Maura Higgins has said she can't contain her excitement as she announced she's going to be taking part in this year's Dancing on Ice. And it's not the Irish one, it's the UK one. It's the ITV one, so she's going to be on alongside, you know that one of Philip Schofield? And Holly Willoughby, are you a big fan of Dancing on Ice? I'm not, I'm not, but the Irish version, you would sh- surely have to be on the list after all the oh, sports no. broadcasters that have been oh, no. have been, <laughs> no have been called up. I think you're, you're next. Um, so apparently Michael Barrymore is going to be on it as well. Yeah, I don't follow any of that at all now, I have to say. This is, this is mad. So Michael Barrymore and Maura, you know, that's a motley crew that they have lined up for Dancing on Ice. Yeah, um, well, the, the, Morrow was always heading for this stuff, wasn't she? There was there's a well-worn path now from, you know... But that's the nice, like, it's millions of people watch it. It's like... It's huge, is it? Yeah. But it, is it Sunday nights? It's Christmas. It's, sorry, it's, it's January, so it's the one after X Factor and all that stuff. It's early in the new year. Is it Saturday nights or Sunday nights? I'd say it's both, some, some weeks. So, so you do the thing on the Saturday and you get kicked out on the Sunday. Like, Sundays, you're generally on the road coming back from somewhere, or so it's just Sunday nights, yeah. So, um... Yeah, I, I miss everything. Like I'm back in time for League Sunday, maybe at that time of the year. That'll be it. So I'm yeah. looking forward to seeing who else they have. That's going to be a very motley crew. You're putting Mora and Michael Barrymore. Michael Barrymore. I mean, come on, mm. Jesus, there's a blast. It's a long way back. Yeah, it's a. It's been a long road back, but he's back, baby. Uh, and then a remarkable outburst from um, the current Liverpool manager saying, "Give my job to Jero." This is. Uh, I mean, nonsense, surely. Jurgen Klopp wants cop legend Steven Gerrard to succeed him when he eventually steps down as a real boss. That's, type of, that's like, pfft, I don't view him as a threat. Um, well, I suppose that was maybe part of the thinking when he went, to, when he went up to Rangers, but I, 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 he'd, have to, he'd have to do something with Rangers first, wouldn't he? Yeah. 
He'd at least to, something. Yeah. So and and if he oversees the tenure with Celtic do the the fabled ten in a row, um, you know, ten in a row. I think, come on. Yeah, yeah. There you go. We think we have problems here with Dublin. I mean, well, <laughs> if it gets to ten. Uh, and then, sorry, uh, one last one from the back of the star. Uh, Gavin's future is still in doubt. So. Karen Cunningham saying that Jim Gavin has still not confirmed his future. Gavin was non-committal following his all Ireland final win over Kerry on the 14th of September. But he's making the point um, that because of this speculation, an announcement could be made as soon as this Friday because the Dublin Senior Football Club Championship kicks into gear and so they would want the new manager to be in situ. Having said that, all the papers have basically anointed Desi Farrell as the next Dublin manager. Like, no, no competition, no... No doubt, no jeopardy. It's his gig if he wants it. Yeah, well, Desi was... He's gone from the GP a couple of years now and in his sort of exit interview, um, he was asked about, you know, is he going to be... Is he leaving to become the next Dublin manager? And he said, look, no, that's not on the on the agenda at the minute. But sort of widely taught around the city and around the country that if and when Jim went, um, that he He'd was the next the man. man up. Yeah. Um, and I don't think anything has changed since that. What have you got for us, sir? Um... So starting with that story about Steve, uh, about Jurgen Klopp saying Stephen Gerrard is the is the man to replace him. Um, there's a small bit on saying uh, on uh, the on Ed Woodward giving Ole. It's it's not quite a vote of confidence, but it's Close in that enough, it's in it? that parish, isn't it? it? Definitely like um, which means he'll be away. gone in a fortnight, I suppose. And that's generally the the uh, the way. Then there's the Pochettino uh, stuff again with uh, Spurs crashing out. And uh, just a small bit from uh, the Rugby World Cup saying that uh, Rob Carney saying that uh, Japan this is Japan's World Cup final. So, um, which he might have a point. He absolutely has a point. So uh, Ireland needs to be prepared for that. Which is interesting that because um, I wouldn't have picked him in your in your head. You wouldn't have picked Roy Best and you wouldn't have picked um, Sexton. But uh, Ron Lugar was like, I would I'd be picking them for this game. Yeah, well, like. Those boys were always going to be managed at some stage, weren't they? they were, their minutes were going to be managed at some stage between the first game and what was going to expect to be a quarter final. So, yeah. um, whether they miss this one or the next one, um, it doesn't really matter, does it? Well, like, it, you want them coming into the South Africa game. Exactly. So, play whoever you get there. Is, so, yeah. So your point is play them in this one, which is where there's a bit of jeopardy. The next game, there's no one. Like, we're going to. We're if, going the other thing is, you have no three problems. weeks, don't you? Even yeah. if something goes wrong this weekend, you still have three weeks, which is yeah, a reasonable amount. Of time. Even if they've got to play the first forty minutes and we're twenty points up, at that point you can whip them mm. off. Uh, the Irish Independent back page this morning. Uh, day shot for outsider Cal is Davy faces model D Day. So, um, did you already do the endo? No, you did the Herald. No, did the Herald, yeah. Uh, doubts hang over Sexton, but Kearney and Earls are ready to face Japan. So, uh, Rob Kearney does look like he is going to be ready. So, he hadn't taken full part in the warm up last week, which meant everybody thought he was a bit further back than the rest of the uh, the injured lads. But obviously, Keith Earls is fine. Does Keith Earls get straight back in the team? Who? Again, it comes back to what, what their plan was before the. Um, Ronald Garrick kind of referred to what his plan was for them before the World Cup in terms of minutes. He probably would have started against Scotland. Yeah, definitely. So, um, you know, and now he is probably, he's a bit of ground to make up now, I'd imagine. Yeah, so, Conway played so well. Yeah. Like, you're like, maybe we stick with Conway for this one. Yeah, and then you have a, two sort of live options and decision to make again going into qualifying. Yeah. And then, sorry, that, that um, story is that Liam Cal is going to be the new Waterford hurling boss. Uh, yeah, an interesting appointment. He's um, did a good job with Tipperary last year or this year. Um, uh, and obviously Liam Sheedy being in Tipperary and will be for the next couple of seasons at least you'd imagine that he's going off maybe to cut his teeth and um, you know the, the Waterford are a lot better than the show this year I would say yeah. um, now it is a it's a snake pit to, to Munster Championship but um, I think it's only two was it 17 during the Ireland final so they're still, uh, not the core of that team are still there yeah, um, and a lot Tip of that under 21 team Tipperary didn't get out of Munster and then win the Ireland yeah, next year yeah, so yeah. Like I, wouldn't, I don't think it would be quite that dramatic but I do think they are an awful lot better than, than they showed um, in 2019 looks like Uruguay are going to beat Fiji they're 30-22 ahead with 78 minutes on the clock so uh, this is a bit of a shock yeah we were looking at it there it's the 19th ranked team Uruguay and Fiji are ranked 10th so yeah it's a bit of an upset in that regard um yeah, 19th beaten 10th, and they're 90 seconds away from doing it. Shouldn't Fiji have beaten Australia? Or, like, shouldn't Australia have had a man sent off, and that would have changed things quite dramatically? Um, I suppose it would have, but you always feel that, like, I was looking at the, the Russian team yesterday, they were out four days after their, uh, or five days, was it, between their first game and their second game. Yeah. And, like, it's an impossible ask, particularly of rugby. Like it's yeah. and it's the weakest one of the weakest teams in the world. I think they're the bottom ranked team in, in the in the competition. So, 
like they they were sort of grist to the mill there in a lot of ways and yeah. I think we're going to see an awful lot of that more like as you'll see slight, like a Super 8 version where you saw or at the end the weaker teams in Super 8 sort of their challenge fell away or even in the the Leinster the, the outside team in the, the Leinster Hurling Championship like say the Carlo was yeah. this year as the competition went on and it went into week 3 and 4 and game 3 and 4 it gets harder they just harder they fall further away you're going to see that multiplied many times over now because they're going to be so shattered after the games yeah uh, Fiji just had a penalty in the 22 and bad game management I would have kicked that penalty put them one score behind and try and win the restart and then give yourselves all the addition extra time because if they score a try now there's 30 seconds left it's going to be too late yeah. likely for them to um, have a restart you, I suppose when you think of Fiji you don't that's not really the thing that comes to mind is it you think all the lovely stuff and the, the big hits and the soft hands and all that stuff but um, they're very close to getting over now yeah, so, um, so yeah, look, no, they're done. No matter what happens now, they're done. Yeah, it's too late for them. Uh, the Guardian, the back page of The Guardian. Uh, IOC delays new transgender guidelines for 2020 Olympics and United stand by Solskjaer. We're patient as Ole and team built for future. Uh, Mora miss seals Spurs penalty. Well, bad penalty shootout from Spurs. Uh, Lucas Mora and Christian Eriksen both missing. Uh, that story is an exclusive from Sean Ingle. Plans by the IOC to introduce stricter guidelines for transgender athletes before Tokyo 2020 have run into the sand because its panel of scientists is struggling to reach agreement on such a thorny issue. Um, I just have the back of the sun here. Um, again, it's it's Pochettino and Spurs. Um, this uh, more Man United at Solskjaer stuff, but I suppose the one that catches the eye is just saying that, and, and it's something that might come into... Uh, it might take on significance down the line, but it's just saying that Conor Murray will again be entrusted with kicking duties if needed. So in a scenario where uh, Sexton is on the pitch, but his leg is at him like it was in the Scotland game, that Murray will, will be the man. And he kicked one and three in that Scotland game. Um, and you'd imagine against South Africa, the, the averages would have to go up a little bit better. Yeah. Even though, in fairness, some, a couple of those kicks were pretty tricky. Yeah. Um, but uh, that's, that's interesting because it's, it's not hard to foresee a scenario where to decide they need Sexton so much. That he's going to play. That he's going to play, but he can't kick, so Conor Murray's kicking then. So, Yeah, because uh, although if he can't play, if he can't kick, then do you just stick... Well, he kicked from the hand, didn't he, against Scotland, and he didn't kick from the tee, so... Yeah, so he, he kicked the... Yeah, he kicked the restart of the second half, you're right. Um, but do you not just put Joey Carby in? Does that mean, not mean get Carby the game time now? Um, do you that's, know? That's, that's, that's the choice, but like, do you go into, do you go into, um, into South a South Africa game without, without Johnny Sexton? I, mean, I don't think you can win it. Certainly we don't feel like we can win it, but who knows? You know, we beat yeah. South Africa with the standing out half in South Africa. Uh, the Irish Times this morning, their front page is New Zealand flicked the switch and all of a sudden are ahead of a curve again. That's the Gordon Darcy column. And Yamanaka and Japan eager to grasp once in a lifetime opportunity. So this is uh, a point that Rob Kearney is also making. Um, they obviously let the lads into the, the photographers into the weight room yesterday. All the Irish yeah, there are some brilliant images from posing them. with their weights. Keen Healy was the one that I saw yesterday on social media. So it's pretty big, the weights that he's carrying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, just the uh, back of the times here, um, World Cup refereeing and turmoil. We've kind of seen a little bit of that this week with the with the, uh, uh, the World Rugby essentially saying, "Listen, hasn't been good enough so far." Which I think is in relation to that tackle you mentioned earlier on, the Australian one. Um, so uh, talking about that, and then again more about social, social safe. Even if United slump goes on, so that's as as we said beforehand. That's the kind of. That's the start of, that's the beginning of the end, usually, that, that talk. Yeah. But they've put so much into Solskjaer, I'd say they're going to give him every chance because that's their serious egg on the face. If, if uh, Again. 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 This, this, this group in thing. fairness to them, he started so well. He and did. And he did that, uh, what was it, 3 0 in Paris, was it? Yeah. That game, uh, this Champions League match. So, you know, there was a little bit of, uh, and then Rio Ferdinand is that famous, that's going to haunt him forever, isn't it, that one? The one where he's. Uh, he says, oh, he's at the wheel, you know, Man United are back, he's slapping the table, I think it's on BT Sports. Well, and there's uh, Gary Neville basically dry humping him on um, Sky. Yeah. After yeah, that, it was like, yeah. oh, it's that, it's that. It was after that game, wasn't it? Just yeah. a, there's a line in there and it says that uh, in the last two years, um, their w- w- wage bill had risen by 12.3% to £332 million, 53% of their turnover. That just doesn't sound like good corporate governance. No, no, they've been they've been badly run in terms of buying well and the wage structure where Alexis Sanchez came in and ruined it for everybody to the point where now they've had to make Everyone a goalkeeper, a high-speed yeah. goalkeeper and all that kind of stuff too. So um, Carney is saying that that same point is that it's going to be a World Cup final for Japan. Do we got the Irish news for you this morning? 
Um, this one here, Downboard plans to use more security at major club games. This is not a very welcome development, but at least the Down County Board are, are not uh, shying away from um, doing what they need to do. So Down GEA plans to deploy additional stewarding and security at major club games this weekend after intimidating behaviour from some supporters and unattended young people, mm. creating havoc. Was this time last year, wasn't there a spate of footage from club games and rows and... Yeah, it's, it's, it is the season. It is the season, and it's the kind of thing that gets an awful... Well, there are two things happening. One is that there's championship on and meaningful knockout championship in most places, so emotions are higher. And two, there's no senior in the county stage for, for something else to talk about. So yeah. it, I, I think at this time of year, things are never quite as bad as the seem with this stuff. Um, we just maybe didn't know about it in the past. There's, well, I, I think we've more evidence of stuff. Have we just is, is it is it happening more? Have we just everyone has it's, a camera? Phone? I'd say I'd say it's definitely we're now more aware of the amount of times that it's happening. That's uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're probably right. You're probably right. But look, as we were saying, I've played a lot of club football. I've, I've seen damn all. Right. In, in well, you're for me. You've got lower. You're, the bar is low for you, lads. You could be like, you're poking the heads off each other, and you'd be like, "Ah, that's nothing." We haven't been poking the heads too many this last. But you know what I mean. People have that image, all right. But it's yeah. it's, it's definitely it's, it's, it's gone. Is it? Well, I don't know if it's gone, but I'm not sure how much it was ever there. I've never played anywhere else, so I don't. I can't yeah. relate it to anything. But I don't think it's. I think people think like you know, it's all Arnon like and Kyle and going around. Exactly. That's yeah. like, that's a very ro a romantic outside <laughs> image of Mead football. I think <laughs> like it's like it's you know it's 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 no worse or no better than than anywhere else. Yeah. It would be, would be no, my I'd like say that ever. was the thing that drove me to their success was that they were hardy boys and that that was. There's a lot of good footballers too. Like you know what I mean? No, look, absolutely. But like they had good footballers the whole time, and then. But sure, all all the good teams have those edge have those edgy guys like. Dublin now, Kilkenny hurlers. You yeah, know, you always need a couple of fellas who. Can oh look, I'm I'm, I'm looking the terms over the, of engagement. I'm, I'm looking over my neighbour's hedge here, wishing we had a bit of it. That's all. Yeah, that's well, your big appointment. Yeah, there you go. Um, so there's, so they're going to charge uh, two quid, two pounds levy, uh, on all under 16s attending the senior football championship semi-finals in Park Esther this weekend. Um, one member of a down club who contacted the Irish News expressed surprise the county board's reaction to bad behaviour was, we will charge you money. Well, like, you know, if it's going to stop people going in. I suppose it just might, yeah, um, a slight, uh, might deter people a little bit. If, yeah. if they're just coming in and cause hassle. If you are in any way interested, I'm sure you can find the two pound. Yeah, no, exactly. So, uh, last one for me is the examiner. A bit of balance. Total land handling referee inconsistencies at the World Cup. Your concern now is that they've given the referees um, a lot of uh, criticism that there's going to be a knee jerk reaction and somebody's going to get sent off in a big game between two big teams and everybody will be like, ooh, oh, they kind of decided the World Cup there, lads. Yeah, it's, it's, it's obviously not just the GAA issue where the refereeing at the start of the championship is very different to the, the refereeing at the end of the championship. Yeah. Um, in a strange way, it might work out okay for Ireland because I think they have Samoa last, haven't they? Yeah. And uh, that you six know, or seven of them have been suspended. Tackles, couple like, of their tackles the yesterday were. Yeah. So it's the kind of thing that could, you know, a pretty innocuous game, Ireland probably threw at that stage, and then somebody picks up a, 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 a tackle that puts them out of the tournament or out of the quarterfinals. So, um, yeah, it's 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 one that um, you'd want to, you'd hope you're on the right side of it when it does happen, but it probably will, almost certainly will be a big call that'll be deemed as an overreaction to this criticism. Yeah, no, totally. So Uruguay have just beaten Fiji 30 points to 27. The last time Fiji and Uruguay met, Fiji won 68-7. So that is uh, quite the turnaround and, um, uh, you know, a, a massive shock because well, Fiji must have been looking at what happened against Australia and thinking, OK, you know what, like, let's just get into this tournament here and give ourselves a, a, a chance and back ourselves and get that extra time spent together and see what patterns can evolve because they've got loads of great players playing all over Europe. So they've no time to get up, have they? Isn't no. Generally, the Pacific Island experiences that generally they don't get to be together. Like they kind of meet up in the airport, and that's yeah. sort of the extent of a lot of them. Um, but there, there's always a. I remember being out. Was it at the last World Cup when I think Japan beat South Africa, and every like it was a, the best underdog story you could hope for. Ah, yeah, it was. And class. there was one Japanese guy, and he was chaired around the place. Remember that video on social yes. media? I don't know where he was watching it in a fan zone somewhere and someone found an Asian gentleman and decided he was you know, representative of, of all of Japan and they gave him the high chair around the place. So uh, no, those underdogs, wins are, those wins against the grain are great. Yeah, especially in rugby where you feel like there's no chance of it ever happening and then yeah. it does happen. So anyway...